Today I have three recipes for you that are very inexpensive, very quick and easy to make, and they all have five or less ingredients in them. I hope you enjoy today's video. Let's go ahead and get on into these recipes. We're starting today off by making this super easy Caesar baked chicken and rice, and you will need to preheat your oven to 375. To start, I have two chicken breasts that I'm going to slice in half to make four pieces of chicken. This is not necessary, but I prefer to do this. I like the thinner pieces of chicken, and they don't take quite as long to bake. To bake this chicken, I'm going to be using a 9 by 13 baking dish. I did spray the bottom down with just a little bit of non-stick spray just to be safe. Now I'm just laying the chicken right in here and I am going to season this with a little salt and pepper. The salt and pepper I did not take into account with the 5 ingredients just because they are such simple seasonings. Of course, if you have more seasonings available, you can always add different seasonings to this as well. For this recipe, I think personally that this Ken's Steakhouse Creamy Caesar is the best dressing for this. If you don't like Caesar dressing, you could always use ranch or any other dressing that you want to. It all kind of comes together the same way. I'm just taking a fork and spreading that Caesar dressing all around the chicken. I'm going to flip it over to make sure both sides are covered and then this is going to go into the oven uncovered for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, it'll come out of the oven looking like this, and what you'll need to do is add about a half cup of shredded Parmesan cheese over this. You could also use mozzarella, but Parmesan really gives off a really great flavor in this recipe. And then this is going back in the oven for an additional 10 minutes to let the chicken finish cooking and let the cheese melt. To go along with my chicken, I went ahead and made one of these rice long grain and wild rice boxes. You can add butter to this, but I actually don't add the butter. I just cook it with the water and it turns out just fine. Here's what my finished plate looked like. I just sprinkled a little bit of parsley over the top. And this whole entire meal is only five ingredients, not including the salt and pepper, of course. Next up, we're making these super easy five ingredient enchiladas. I started this off by preheating my oven to 375 degrees. And into my skillet, I'm adding one pound of ground beef. I'm just gonna let that go ahead and cook through. Once your ground beef is done cooking, make sure you remove all the grease. And into the same pan, you're going to add one cup of salsa. Make sure you pick out your favorite salsa. You can get different flavored ones. I'm just using a medium salsa to give it a little extra heat. Once you have that combined, just let it sit for just a minute while we get our pan ready. So I have one 10 ounce can of red enchilada sauce. I'm adding a very small amount of that into the bottom of the pan, that way the tortillas don't stick. To get started building these, I'm going to be using these tortillas right here, they're just a lower carb version, and this is an 8 pack. For each one of these, I'm going to add a spoonful of our beef and salsa mixture. I'm also adding a little bit of this Mexican style shredded cheese. After adding those, you will just roll those right up and make sure when you put them in your pan that you're putting the seam side down. After that, you're just going to repeat the same process until you have filled all your tortillas. Thank you. 
Next, we're going to be using the rest of that 10 ounce can of red enchilada sauce. Try to pour it over each one as evenly as you can. If you want this to be extra saucy, you can always double the cans, but honestly, one can was plenty. Last but not least, you should have about a half cup to a cup of your shredded Mexican style cheese left. Go ahead and top these enchiladas with the rest of that cheese. I'm adding a piece of foil over the top and then this is going in the oven to bake for about 30 minutes. Here they are straight from the oven and then this is what my finished plate looked like. So you can either eat it just like this plain or if you have the extra toppings available in your house, you can add whatever you want to it. I did add a little sour cream and hot sauce just to add a little extra to it. But like I said, you can eat it just as is plain and they are good that way as well. And finally, we are making this meatless mushroom and Alfredo cheese ravioli. To get this one started, I got a pot of water going and once it was boiling, I added my bag of frozen cheese ravioli in there. Over to a skillet, I added about two tablespoons of butter and just let that melt down. To the melted butter, I added about six to eight ounces of sliced mushrooms. I'm just going to let these cook in here for about five to seven minutes until they soften up and begin to get some color. Once my mushrooms were done, I just removed those from the heat and when my ravioli was done as well, I drained that and then brought it over back to the stove. You will just want to add your mushroom straight into the same pan as your ravioli with that butter that's left in the pan as well. Next, you'll want to add one jar of your favorite Alfredo sauce. It can be any kind, any flavor, whatever you like. I added a little bit of water into my jar and gave it a little shake to make sure I got the rest of the sauce out and then I gave that a good mix together. You might think this looks a little runny but that's okay. We're going to add some of this freshly grated Parmesan cheese in here. I added about three tablespoons of this cheese and then I gave it a mix together and I let it sit for a few minutes and it helped to thicken up a lot. Here is what my finished plate of food looked like. I did make some garlic bread to go along with this. The garlic bread is also really good dipped in the Alfredo and it helps soak some of that up. To top this off, I added a little bit more shredded Parmesan over the top and sprinkled some parsley over it as well, but that is definitely not necessary. Don't be afraid to change up these recipes and add more or less items, whatever you have available in your cabinets, but I really hope you enjoyed today's video and it gave you an idea for your meal plan, and I will see you guys back here on Wednesday with a new video.